Hi, I'm Megan Moran, canola and edible bean specialist, and I'm going to talk about critical growth stages in canola, focusing on spring canola, but I will mention the winter crop as well. And I'm going to kind of walk through uh, based on the different field activities that we do, starting with herbicide timing. So most of us grow Liberty Link or glyphosate tolerant spring canola, and those products are safe to apply right from emergence through to early bolting. Of course, it's more important to look at the growth stage of the weeds and time your herbicide application to the appropriate weed growth stage. Uh, for fertilizer, we're applying our nitrogen and sulfur, our phosphorus and potassium pre-plant, and we're not putting our nitrogen and sulfur in the seed row. Uh, it can be toxic in the seed row. If we want to come in crop with some nitrogen or we're split applying our nitrogen, uh, we want to put that second app on at up to the six leaf stage, maybe eight leaf stage. If we see some sulfur deficiencies, we can apply a rescue application of sulfur up to early flowering. If we start to see some little pods developing, it's probably too late for that uh, late application to be economical. So I grabbed this slide from the Canola Council website. Um, and as you can see with the green line for nitrogen, uh, the crop really needs that nitrogen at elongation and so, or bolting. So we need to put the nitrogen on ahead of that stage, let it wash into the roots. So again, uh, up until about the six leaf stage. Now, this is a spring canola study. Uh, when I think about winter canola though, it's kind of the same thing. We, in the fall, our winter canola reaches the six leaf growth stage. Then in the spring, as soon as it gets warm, it'll put on buds and start to elongate as, as soon as it's warm enough. So we wanna get that nitrogen on the winter canola as soon as we can. For flea beetle, which is primarily a pest of spring canola, uh, the critical growth stages are from emergence to the four leaf stage. And so with treated seed, the flea beetle have to feed on those cotyledons before they'll be affected by that seed treatment. Um, and then they, canola plants can tolerate up to, if the flea beetle are still feeding, it can tolerate up to 50% defoliation. And so we set the threshold at 25% defoliation though, because uh, they move so quickly and it takes time for us to get the sprayers out in the field after we uh, decide to pull the trigger. In a, in a cold spring like this year, um, the, the flea beetle are driven down in the canopy under the plants and they'll start feeding on the stems as you can see in the bottom right hand image. And so we, we're less tolerant of stem feeding. Uh, if they chew through the stem, that's essentially 100% defoliation. Um, and so once a crop reaches the four leaf stage, typically it can outgrow any damage if there was less than 25% defoliation and, and grow right through even with those flea beetles present. Um, but you know, if the field is sitting wet or you have a nutrient deficiency or the crop's just not growing vigorously, then um, you may need to monitor it longer. Um, it, it won't may not outgrow the flea beetle in those cases. We do see some late season flea beetle feeding. They'll strip the pods, which is an issue for diseases and shattering, but there is no threshold for flea beetles at those late growth stages. Um, this is just a picture on the left from one of my plots where we had a lot of flea beetle, and, uh, but it's not common to see this across a field. And if there was a threshold, you know, it would be, you, it would have to look like this, a hundred or more flea beetles per plant. But again, this is very rare and, and uh, we don't typically apply insecticides this late. Plus we have to watch those pre-harvest intervals on the insecticide. Sweet midge is not a pest of winter canola. Uh, it, our spring canola growers though are very familiar with this pest. And so it, uh, critical growth stages are from the one leaf stage through to flowering. They'll lay their eggs on, on the growing points of the plant and if they get in there early, they can prevent the plant from bolting, uh, like in the picture on the left. And so, um, you know, in that area of the field, sweet midge got in prior to bolting, and there's essentially 100% yield loss in that area at the edge of the field in this case. Uh, but once the crop bolts, then we've avoided most of the yield loss issues. And it's not really uh, economical. There's not a good return on investment for applying insecticides for sweet midge. Uh, in the flowering stages. They can prevent the, the branches from elongating, like in the picture in the center, and then we'll get pods low on the, on the plant, which is a problem for harvest and a bit of a yield issue, but again, uh, doesn't uh, provide a lot of value to apply insecticide at that time. 
And they can reproduce on flowers, like in the bottom right hand picture, um, but that's not a, a significant yield loss issue and we wouldn't recommend trying to control them at that stage. Uh, for white mold, of course, the critical growth stages are during flowering. So um, uh, white mold is an issue in both spring and winter canola and fungicide application has a good return on investment because that crop canopy is so thick and dense and it's always wet. It's a nice tall crop, always wet in the canopy. And so there's usually a risk of white mold unless it's been extremely dry. And we wanna coat as many flower petals as we can. So we apply that fungicide preventatively at 20 to 50% bloom. So at about 15 flowers on the main stem, up to about 25 flowers on the main stem, you may see little pods starting to develop. But again, coating those flower petals in the first half of flowering and before we get significant uh, petal drop uh, to prevent that white mold infection. And sometimes we say it's when it's peak yellow, again, just to coat as many flowers as possible. And uh, cabbage seed pod weevil are the last pest I want to talk about. Same, uh, similar critical growth stage as the fungicide timing. Uh, we will see adult weevils in the spring and winter canola crop whenever there are flower buds present, so even before bolting. But feeding on buds isn't a concern. Plants can compensate for that. It's uh, we want to prevent them from laying their eggs in those little newly formed pods because larvae feed on seeds in the pod and then they exit. You can see a hole in the pod in the image on the right and that's a shatter loss issue and um, it opens the pod up to, to diseases. And so we want to spray for weevils uh, right before they lay their eggs. If we go in too early, they'll just reinfest. And so we can often um, time that insecticide application or put the insecticide in with our fungicide application. Uh, so we want to make sure we really are at threshold if we're going to spray insecticide on a flowering crop. So scout with a sweep net in multiple parts of the field, not just the edge of the field. And ideally spraying in the evening or at night to avoid risk to our pollinators. And then finally, uh, harvest timing. Uh, we, with direct harvest, which is uh, most acres in Ontario are direct harvested. We just want all the seeds to be black or brown and below 10% moisture. We can't really deliver grain above 10% and most growers don't have a way of drying canola grain. And so we're opening pods on the branches that mature last, making sure those seeds are brown or black or at least starting to turn brown or black and fewer than 2% are green. And they'll start to rattle when they're dry. You might wanna open up the field and, and test the harvest moisture or grain moisture. Um, if it's a really hot, dry day, you might be able to start harvesting at 11 or 12 percent because uh, grain moisture can drop through the day. But ideally, just harvest as soon as it's ready to avoid any shatter losses or, or so it doesn't get rained on uh, in the meantime. And the stems may still be green. The pods could be any color on the outside. Uh, there's some swapping happening in really short season areas in the north. And in that case, they're just making sure the bottom third of plants on the main stem are black, uh, the middle third of seeds in pods on the, on the main stem are turning black or mostly black, and then the top third can still be green. And that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And if you have any questions, you can contact me anytime.